This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the WBO interim heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Joyce. Joe, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, Danny. How, how's, how are you? How's, oh, good. Uh, thank you, mate. Gearing up for Christmas. And, can't uh, wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big into Christmas. I love it, I've got to say. What about you? You big Christmas guy? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I enjoy Christmas. Yeah, Christmas is all right. Yeah, it's a uh, time to like chill out and relax the family and you know, enjoy the festivities and, and stuff. And like, see where why it's the original reason as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh do you get involved in the cooking? In the cooking, yeah. I get involved in the eating. Yeah, yeah, we all get involved. <laughs> in the eating, <laughs> <don't we? laughs> Good stuff. Um, we last saw you, I mean, we saw you in action not too long ago, but we last saw you at the uh, Fury Chisora fight, uh, particularly at the end. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, you seem to be sitting for large parts of the evening with Alexander Usyk, who's the yeah. unified heavyweight champion, someone you've crossed paths with in the amateurs, of course. What what were you guys kind of talking about? How, how was that kind of dynamic between you? Well, the di dynamic was, was right. It's like quite respectful. I've got... I think we've got a lot of respect for each other. We see each other, you know, often enough. But like at that particular time, or we watching the boxing, that we was already. I, I was kind of like, I, I didn't really know what to say with it to him, and he probably didn't. I don't know. We were just like watching the fight. <laughs> like that's like, really awkward. <laughs> no, it wasn't awkward. It was just yeah. I didn't really know what to say to him, so we just watched the fight, the boxing. <laughs> And then at the end, he obviously got up on, on the apron, had the little confrontation, stage-managed confrontation with Tyson Fury. And then you were kind of, I don't know if you were egging him on or if you were just watching. And then suddenly you were on the apron as well. Just, just talk us through that. Yeah, so uh, I saw it happened quite quick. But yeah, so Fury called up Usyk and called, called him up to, you know, to get up to ringside. And then I was kind of there. I was like, should I, like, what, is he going to cut? He's going to cut, like, I was like, I don't know. And then, like, I saw, I saw Adam, and I was like, and he's like, he's like, yeah, you should go up. I was like, yeah, yeah, I think I should. So I went and got up and climbed up, but helped up by the security a bit, and then, yeah, and then the rest is history. Yeah, it's good stuff. It was very entertaining. Fun, but it was fun, though. I got quite hyped up there with the security. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. We need to see more of that. We need to see more of that from you, Joe. I think that was that was a lot of fun. Mm. No, it was good stuff. Um, and Fury has since said, I think it was in the post-fight press conference, he wants to fight Usyk next. He's willing to do it. I know negotiations are, are taking place at the moment. But if for any reason that fight doesn't happen, he'd like to fight you. And, and even if it does happen, he'd like to fight you after Usyk. I mean, you're in a great position anyway, but is it reassuring to hear Tyson say that, that you know that he, it's a fight he wants? Yeah, it, it definitely is, and uh, he get, obviously gave uh, Chisora that opportunity, and so I guess that he, you know, he's he's up for the he's up for for taking me on. So, uh, oh yeah, go on, go on. Then. <laughs> I was just gonna say, yeah. So he he seems game for it. Do you think he's making a huge mistake though? Do you think maybe he's under underestimating you? I mean, you've you've sparred before. Yeah, I, I don't think he would be underestimating underestimating me, but he like you know he says he's the best um, heavyweight in the world, and um, and like he was saying on my, on my day I might have a shot. So let's see if uh, once we fight and see how how it all pans out. I see think his day is. Everyone wants to see it. It's a it's a good fight. I think yeah. um, a lot of people like a lot of my other fights will think. It'll just wipe the floor of me. But then when it gets down to it and people who know their boxing, know their stuff, know it'll be a tough fight. So let's get it, get get the get the things in motion and uh, build the fight. Tell, tell us about the sparring, because this that will help build the fight in itself. But what, what was it like when you actually crossed paths with Tyson in the ring? Yeah, it was a it's very technical, it's very um it's a very like 50-50, it was a, a very competitive. Yeah, very competitive sparring. Also, Guido Vianello was in the, was in the mix as well, my uh, S champ stable mate. And um, yeah, he did some good rounds over like a, cu a couple of weeks. And uh, it's really hard, tough to train up in Big Bear. 
uh, as with uh, Abel Sanchez, and it was um, yeah, man, that was uh, it's, it. It must have been quite hard for Fury to stay up there because there's, there's not a lot to do, and uh, he he decided to go back down to LA after after a couple of weeks. Was he? Uh, I'm not trying to put words into your mouth, but the the rumor at the time was that he was struggling a little bit fitness wise with it being at altitude. Was there any truth to that, or he was just bored? Yeah, no. Nah, if you, if you go, <laughs> you try going up and training at big, big Bear, you have to be a one ton bastard. <laughs> that way, but um, because no, but the altitude it takes like, up to ten days to 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 stop being affected by it because it is. Um, you know, the first day you're up there, it's, the air is beautiful. It smells like pine trees. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. It like, smells like Christmas. <laughs> but, oh, lovely. But when you're training there, yeah, in the art, it takes you a while to get used to. So that may, may be some of that as well. And plus we're doing longer rounds. Did you ever kind of think while you're in there, and you've spied a lot of uh, equally good heavyweights uh, uh, status-wise as yourself, do you ever think when you're in sparring, we could fight one day, this could be a huge fight one day, or are you just purely focusing on the job at hand? Yeah. Yeah, because I guess heavyweight boxing, you know, once because I, I expect myself to get up the levels and, you know, but like, obviously it was a lot, there's a lot bigger gap then. Mm. I'd only kind of like just, you know, just start like picking my way up a bit uh, low ranks and that, but it, yeah, because in heavy, you know, you're gonna eventually fight. So it is. A, it was good, good learning for. Learning. And and do you um, obviously that was quite a few years ago now. What have you made of Tyson's kind of development and change of approach, if you like? Because he's a lot more aggressive now, certainly in the, in his fights than he was back then. Yeah, I think it's just um, check like change of trainers and stuff they each have their attributes that they want to instill on you and and stuff but um yeah i think uh, and what what is working for him as well because like he is a big man and like he's shown that he can finish it because he has all the you know the um defensive movements like the head movement the footwork and all that and and that technical stuff so so he can like outbox you and pick you off but then like what he had to do for for Wilder and stuff was go in and be like, and take it take it to him. So that's what kind of style he's kind of adop adopted. And what do you make of his kind of recent approach? Certainly with Dillian White and and with Chisora as well. He's tried to walk them down. It's fair to say. Do you anticipate he try that against you? Well, it'll be one entertaining fight. Isn't it? <laughs> so. Uh, but it, it shows you can do both. Like, in, so that, I mean, I'd have to, to be able to like, train for like both, you know, whatever he's going to do. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine him trying to walk you down. I don't think, uh, in your career so far as a pro, has anyone tried that tactic? Yeah, I remember, um, you know, like sparring with Broccoli. Oh, <laughs> Prime yeah. example, he was, try he was trying to walk me down. <laughs> that was a tough spot. <laughs> yeah. But only in sparring. Yeah, it's sparring, yeah. Yeah, because they know. <laughs> they know it's not a good idea. But maybe maybe Tyson will try it's to It's exciting, do. though. I like, I like it when people do. Toe-to-toe, tash-to-tash, and all that. So that's what you want with Tyson, is it? Toe-to-toe, tash-to-tash? Yeah, I think um, mix it at the centre of the ring for us, for whoever can stand there the longest. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I don't know. That's what we want to see. Last yeah, man why not? standing. <laughs> good, last man standing. We like it. Um, talking of Fury and Usyk, do you expect we will see the undisputed fight next? Yeah, I believe so. I think it's it's going to be in March, isn't it? Uh, That's what they say. March the fourth is the date uh, in the frame. Yeah. Usyk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, do do you are you kind of from what you've seen of both teams talking and all of that? Do you think it will happen next? Are you are you kind of confident? Yeah, I'm quite confident. Yeah. I think I think that show can should go ahead, and I'll, I'll be fighting around roughly the same around the same time. So then, next move will be uh, for the big fight. So how does that work in terms of matching you for the next one then? Because you you obviously don't want to fight uh, easy pickings if you like, because no. you want to stay sharp and, and everything else. But you're in a really great position. You don't want to accumulate too many miles before. 
the huge fight. So, uh, what sort of level can we expect? Uh, top uh, top fifteen. We're looking at. That's pretty good. A good, like a good name, like a good fight. I like it being in good fights. It's fun. It gets, yeah. gets uh, you know, the, gives people entertainment. What you come here for? Yeah, good stuff. I don't suppose there's any chance of you being on the same bill as Fury and Usyk, is there? No, no, that's probably unlikely. Yeah, yeah with it being in the Middle East that's as well. Happened. Well, I don't know. well, we'll see what happens, but yeah, probably <laughs> un- unlikely. Would you would you prefer to headline your own show anyway? Yeah, I think I'm at the stage of my career where I can headline now, so mm. that's what I've been doing. And one of your biggest uh, headline fights, or at least the most memorable, was against Daniel Dubois. Uh, recently, the I not the IBF, sorry, the WBA, to think about that one, have uh, named him as the mandatory contender for Usyk. Um, we'll wait to see what happens with Undisputed. What did you make of that? Because obviously he is the WBA regular champion. I suppose it was only a matter of time, but still... Given what's happened since he fought you, what did you make of his positioning as the mandatory now? Uh, well, it's it, you know it's 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 the right for it's l- lucky. It's you know it's it's good that he's uh, it's good for him, isn't it? <laughs> but like, if you look at it, it's uh, it, like his last performance as well, mate. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. That's that's what's ha- that's what's happened. That's what's happened. I mean, talking about his last performance, do you look at that and think there's obviously a a, a weakness there that's always been there, or do you see it as you maybe broke him, if you like? I think the, it's like it's with experience. He hasn't got the experience, and now he's like, you know, he's all of a sudden all the way up the like WBA regular now. But he hasn't picked up that experience, and, and and like he's boxing outside, and I don't know, and it, he's he's probably not warmed up properly, and he's done his knee, and he looked terrible. He looked terrible, like like I was at the top with Adam Morelli, uh, the top of the, the stadium in the, and we went to get something to eat and try to drink, and then come back like we're watching the fight. We had to come come rush down. We thought like, oh my god. The ball's getting fucking chipped. Like, he got three counts in the first round. I'm like, what is going on? Were you a bit like... That would be an embarrassing if he got knocked out by him. Well... Where does he go from there? But would you have taken and, something and, out as well? And, and he's still getting the shot at the side, shot at the side of. <laughs> Must be what, something what, going on. Wrong. What, would, you, Danny, would you... Danny, would you... Were you trying to... Were you trying to speak? <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Would you have been annoyed if he had got if Lorena had got him out of there early because it obviously beats him faster than you did, mate? It almost happened. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it didn't. (laughs) Thankfully for him and for you. Thankfully, I mean, this one might make you laugh as well. How would you feel if, and it looks unlikely because of his injury, but how would you feel if he got a world title shot before you did? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Everyone seems to have it in for me anyway. So <laughs> I don't things don't seem to go my way. Like even but I'll get there in the end. It does seem crazy though that someone you beat conclusively, I'd say I know the whole narrative is that it was very close up until the end, but you know, the ending was certainly conclusive. And the WBA are ahead in the rotation. So it's it's pl- it's possible. It just doesn't seem entirely fair. Well, life's not fair, is it, Danny? <laughs> That is true, Joe. That's not a very festive philosophy, but you are right. Can't argue with that. Uh, um, yeah, pre- presumably you wouldn't be very happy if that happened. But because of the injury, it looks unlikely that he'll be able to take that shot anytime soon. So have you been given kind of assurances by Queensbury, who promote both you and Tyson, that you will be next after Undisputed? Yeah, I yeah, I believe so. Um because I think that's next to be ordered, or, or whatever happens, I'm gonna get get to the top of the division and be heavyweight champion. And I'm close. I've got the in- WO interim, which is good at the which is good. At the manager is gonna be called. So, and like, you know, particularly with Fury, like he chooses who wants to fight, doesn't he? Pretty much. So, um, Usyk doesn't. I don't think he want he wants it. He's flapping. He he's want to fight me. Uh, 
So, so they, I don't know. Let's see what happens. But I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, Fury's a man of his word and will fight me next. Fight, beat up Usyk and then fight me next. And the WBO interim title means that if for any reason the winner of Undisputed vacates the WBO belt, you become the champion, the full champion. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool position to be in. I mean, yeah, no, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so after the fight, I, I, yeah, I get um, elevated anyway. So, but, yeah. But presumably you'd rather win it against the champion. Yeah. If Well, I mean, obviously the next step is to unify. So with once I become the full camp champion, then I can unify against these other other guys, right? I mean, so yeah, either 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 uh, <laughs> well, winner basically, I don't know, <laughs> or or but, but if the titles all become um, you know up for grabs, then yeah, there'll be other they'll come vacant, and then there'll be uh, there'll be other ways to recapture to capture them, maybe. Yeah, to yeah. capture them all. Well, yeah, exactly. Who who do you kind of rate as the the biggest heavyweight threats outside of the title holders, apart from yourself, obviously? Uh, Wilder, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind, yeah, chuck a couple in. Oh, yeah, there's Reese Joshua still there. Oh, baby, did you mind? <laughs> you don't sound convinced, Joe. I've got to say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> After the last fight, maybe maybe not so much. But it was his first one with a new trainer, so we'll have to see how that develops. Um, talking of trainers and of Joshua, as you just mentioned him, he's been seen in the US working with, I think, Virgil Hunter at one point, Derek James more recently. Seems to be shaking up his training team again. What, what do you make of that? Because you've been with a number of trainers in your career. It seems to have benefited you. Do you, do you think Joshua's on the right path? I think well, I I well, it, it's not like he's like really moved moved around because he's still staying in the same place right now to train, is he? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. I mean, he's touring the US now, but I think he'll bring someone over potentially. Yeah, well, yeah, it's important to have the right trainer, and I I felt like I found the right trainer at first, like early on in my career when I started training with Salas, I knew he was the right coach for me, but then. I only changed because he was injured and he couldn't hold pads for me anymore. So then I went with Abel Sanchez, who was great because he built, I learned stuff, built my stre uh, strength up, like, and then uh, came back to London and trained with Adam Booth, who's then like picked up stuff. But then I've obviously gone back to my original coach, who was his mouth, Salas. But yeah, along, but yeah, doing that, it's also, you know, all the traveling and stuff I've done over my career, like this is amateurs as well, is, important to like learn like learn and learn new things and I guess if you have to find where you belong. And do you think I know Joshua put a comment out recently saying uh he prefers to fight Dillian White again rather than Fury because White's got more swag, I think was the quote. Not sure how much of the criteria going into a fight swag matters, but regardless, yeah. what would you make of them going at it for a second time? I think it's a good good fight. It's a good good move to see because um, I enjoyed the first fight they had. Like there were some moments in there that you know that both were uh, being successful in that. And I think right now they both like had you know losses, and it'd be good to see what you know how how this fight goes, this second fight goes, and then like off the back of that, then that can like build like that can you know, leads them on to a good fight, whoever the, the winner. Do you see a, a Joshua or White fight in your future? Yeah, possibly. I, I'm like, I think they're still, I think they're both younger than me. I don't know. But yeah, I think hopefully, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I guess a lot of people want to see me take on Joshua, see how that goes down with all the... Uh, shenanigans in the past and that <laughs> is it a fight you'd like like on a personal level yeah but I, I've got you know I've got I, I want to fight for titles first and then I can like fight for them fights the fans on the sea yeah but like most fights you're looking to get fights to put you in a position to where you want to go you're looking to achieve goals 
with someone like Joshua, and maybe there's some others on your list, is there like more of a personal motivation that there's certain names you want to fight? Uh, yeah, I think, <clears throat> you know, they make sense. Like, because obviously a Joshua fight would be a big money fight, a big mm. stadium fight. So yeah, I'll, that, that I'll fight him. I guess same uh, with Dillian White as well. I think, you know, he's... Uh, you know, it took a long time for him to get his title shot, but maybe I could give him one after I've got one. I don't know. That, that'd be a good fight. People want to see that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Who who out there, apart from the names we've already talked about, who's like a big money fight for you? I mean, well, I suppose we mentioned nearly every heavyweight going already, so it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're all big fights here yeah. now, aren't they? I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, big money fights. There's a difference, isn't there? Like, you know, you battered Carlos Takam. That was a great fight. But it was, it's not a huge... Well, I don't know how much you got paid. But it's not, it's not like what you would consider a big money fight like you and Joshua or you and Fury. Mm. So, yeah, who, who are the kind of ones you'll sell out a stadium against? Is it Fury, Joshua, maybe White? Joshua, White. Uh, so, Fury, Joshua, Wilder. Oh, Wilder, of course, yeah. <laughs> Vegas... Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably White as well. That would do numbers. And you mentioned uh, that, that you're older than both Joshua and White. You're certainly fresher, I would suggest, than they are. But yeah. How much longer do you feel you want to go on with boxing? You haven't achieved the main goal yet, but once you do, are you going to have that motivation to continue on, dominate the division? Oh, I don't know. It depends who's, who's uh, so it depends on the numbers. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, one more fight. Uh, how much? <laughs> Brilliant. Do, do you, obviously, you started late. Have you ever put kind of a cap on yourself in terms of what age you want to get out at? I, I reckon around 40. Is like, yeah, I reckon I've got three years left. What is it? Three years? Yeah, three years. Almost. All right. You get what? Six, six big money fights in that time. Yeah, if it, yeah. That set you up. Set me up nicely. Yeah. Have you thought about what you want to do after boxing? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got, um, got a few ideas. I, I, I'm, I mean, obviously the punditry and like the I don't know. Maybe I could do something in uh, film. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Or like coaching. I could do my art. Sell my art. Put my paintings. I could teach. It's good when you've got loads of different talents, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> teach, teach swimming, can teach boxing, can teach diving, can teach a bit of capoeira, can teach art. Wow. You've got it all planned out. Teach it up there. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think you'll do all right here, Joe. I don't think you'll need to work for a start, but yeah, if you want to, you've got a, a number of options by the sound of it. Joe, really appreciate your time, mate. And and the other times we've spoken this year as well, always accessible, which is a pleasure for people in the media. Um, very best of luck. I'm always accessible-ish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Accessible, not always when you say you're going to be, but we get there in the end. In the end, yeah, there we go. That's good enough. That's still, <laughs> that's still better than a lot of people, trust me. Yeah. But no, really appreciate it. Have a great Christmas. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you back in action in the new year. Awesome, Danny. Cheers, Joe. Take care, mate.